We continue to remember Rod Wood tonight. Rod passing away this weekend at 81 years old. Rod was a colleague, a friend to everyone here at News Channel 9. We're all remembering him in our own way tonight. The Grote family passed along this message. I'd like to read it, part of it for you now. It reads as follows. A native son, he loved Syracuse and central New York above all other places. Nothing brought him more joy than serving and delivering the news to our community. His pride in Syracuse and its rich history, past and present, was unceasing. If you were a central New Yorker, you had a friend in Rod Wood, and we were fortunate enough to call him dad. Thank you for all the love and support you showed him from the beginning of his career back in 1963. We will miss him beyond measure. And our Carrie Lazarus shared the anchor desk with Rod for three decades. Unfortunately, Carrie can't be with us tonight. She's traveling, but uh, she did want to pass along this message. I'd like to read it to you. How lucky we all were to have Rod's experience and knowledge and wonderful sense of humor. But as the person who sat next to Rod for 32 years, I was the luckiest. Rod was my mentor and my rock. And I will cherish our friendship always. And Rod was that. He was more than a colleague to us. He was a friend. You know, my kids always call him Uncle Rod, and I think for the longest time, until they were teenagers, they never knew that he wasn't a blood relative because he treated them just like he was their uncle and yeah. such a dear, dear friend and made us all laugh I so tell you, often. For 40 years, I come into the newsroom almost all the time and tell him, it's because of watching you on Channel 5 when he was a weekend anchor and on WSYR, listening to him on WHN radio. He was my hero as a kid, and he was a big part of the reason that I got into this business. And he would never accept that, or he wouldn't take the blame. I'm not sure one of the other. <laughs> I can second that motion, Tim, and that emotion as well, because he was my boyhood role model growing up, listening to him on the radio on the school bus on 62 WHEN. I say, I w one of the things that made me know I, I want to do that when I grow up, because listening to the Syracuse News on the radio with Rod Wood, and then all those years later, and when I got here in 1984, I got to work with Rod Wood right next to him. And from the moment I walked in the newsroom, he was always so encouraging to a young kid who basically had nothing going for him outside of some radio himself. He just was a constant, as you say, Christy, friend yeah. and mentor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you guys remember, because we all had this moment, that first time, that first day on the job, you walk into the newsroom, and he's there. We all grew up watching him, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. You guys remember that? Do you remember sure. that first day? I do. And he knew everything about me already. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow, you've got some really good sources. It was incredible. Um, and he loved the news. I mean, you talk about the consummate newsman. Mm -hmm. He prided himself in knowing everything first. And when I walked in the newsroom, he would be sharing the news with me because that gave him joy, mm -hmm. that he was the first to find out about it and to share it, and he loved sharing that with all of you. Yeah. And, um, hey, Danny, here's, your, so, here's who you call. You call yes. this guy. You, you call him. <laughs> yeah. Just tell him, I, tell him Rod told you to he call. Knew call. Yeah. everybody. Yeah, and yeah. whenever we needed a comment, we would oh. always tell Rod to pick up the phone and call <laughs> because he was able to get comments from the, the, you know, the most respectable people in town, oh, the yeah. newsmakers, where we couldn't get that. He had so, a secret. Yeah. He had a secret, and I don't know how many people know this, mm -hmm. and I think the statute of limitations has run out now, <laughs> but Rod Carr was the spokesman for the Syracuse Police Department yeah. for many years, and mm -hmm. he was a former radio guy. And Rod Wood would pick up the phone and call CID or whatever department he needed to down at the police station. And, yeah, it's Rod. What can you tell me about this story? <laughs> and they just assumed it was Rod Carr. <laughs> we got a lot of... Uh, he had a that. lot of tricks up his sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the, the thing that, that made him um, real that a lot of people at home didn't get to see that we all had the opportunity to see is that he was the very serious newsman on the air, right? And, man, he liked to have fun oh, so off the air, too, oh, right? Oh I mean, gosh. he was always at the center of it in the newsroom. Yeah. And, and in the kind of industry we work in, um, 
You need some tension breakers mm -hmm. sometimes, yeah. right? Oh, he was the go-to guy for yeah. that, Jeff. From the, from the moment I came into this mm -hmm. TV station, you could count on him no matter how bad the day was going or no matter how tense it was in the newsroom. And there were a lot of tense mm -hmm. moments in any newsroom. This one is no exception. He would find some way to lighten it up. Some way, even if it was just an imitation of a... Rodney of, Dangerfield. Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> uh, I get no respect. Yeah. <laughs> He's so or funny. even certain animals that he chose yeah. to imitate. He, he did it with a smile and, and, a, and a bit of a smirk and he everybody loved it and loved him yes and he did take t the time to know everybody um, oh. on the floor mm -hmm. behind the scenes first name no everything and nicknames for everybody too interns I mean yeah. yeah it ran the whole entire gamut yeah he knew everybody as a as a human being and right. a person and I think that that's you know that's incredibly commendable uh, right. for somebody at that stature who you know you could think very easily I'm so big, I've done yep. so yes. much, I don't need to, but he always right. did, always. everybody. Yeah. And always. he never considered himself anything more than mm -hmm. the guy next door, and that right. is exactly what he was. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I wasn't that much younger than his oldest kids, and yet Rod, from the day I walked in the place, was a big brother. And I think that was the, the connection. And to central New York, you know, he was, he was a comforting presence. Mm -hmm. He was just a guy you could trust, a guy who would always try to get it right, work as hard as he could. First that voice on the radio and then 44 years at this TV station and you mentioned it in your piece at five o'clock Tim the friend and he the sound bites you use that I, I always wanted to treat everybody as family yeah. and Carrie mentioned it in her statement of family and I, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't if I had time to say that that family thing went right to the very end. A week ago Thursday, I had a chance to visit him at the rehab and the nursing facility in Baldwinsville with uh, Melissa Thorne, friend of mine and a director on the morning news for all these years. And he, it was a week ago Thursday, so if for 90 minutes we were able to talk to him and he was cracking jokes still mm -hmm. and he had a pile of the uh, holy shirt shirts that his sons <laughs> make say, Dan, take, make sure you take one for you and for one for Jonah and one for Anna. And what size is Danielle? Take one for her. Melissa brought him his favorite sandwich and he was still cracking us up wow. with jokes. And, and then the, well, the thing Melissa said to me going up with, I got to make sure we see Rod because he needs to know that He needs to know that his family still cares about him. This was his second family. Am I wrong, right on that? Absolutely, I, absolutely. I, I think I am. It this was his, it was his home, Dan. Yeah. I mean, he would come in. How many how many hours early would he come in to work, and how late would he stay in yeah. into the night um, doing the eleven o'clock for so many years, right, Christy? Well, yeah. till midnight, he'd be in by noon. Uh, and if he wasn't in by noon, oh. which was hours before where's, where's he needed Rod? to be, where, where, is where was and he? And you know what he yes. did after work? He mm. went home and made sandwiches <laughs> for all of us yes. for the next day. Yeah. The yeah. photographers, reporters, to make sure everyone was taken care of. That's what he did after work. I mean, he seriously, Carrie, in your, in your piece at five, said, you know, he, the, this is like an arranged marriage when co-anchors stay together so long. You remember that great line mm -hmm. she used at the broadcasters group there? That was an arranged marriage. But this family, is there's nothing arranged about it. He just took everybody in yeah. as a younger, as a, like a, another son or a younger, younger brother, right on to, you know, a sister, a daughter. Yeah. You, you he know? did it in the newsroom and he did it at your home because he had a scooter that he absolutely loved <laughs> and he would drive, spend his whole weekend driving all over the county yeah, including visiting our house. Us. He'd come to our house. Yeah, it could be surprise <laughs> visits, right? <laughs> getting to know everybody's neighbors, getting a jar of pasta across mm -hmm. the street. I mean, you know, it was just... And we know that's why you all welcomed him into your homes for so many years, because like you, he treated you as family, and you returned the favor for all those years. Incredible. Um, it's, it's just, I don't know, it's hard to put into words. I know we're all kind of, seems surreal. Um, right. to all of us, I think, I at this moment, just doesn't feel real yet. Um, Jeff, it's genuine love. Yep, yep. That's what you feel. Yep, yep. He's a great man. I loved him. Yep. Rest in peace, Rod. Rod Wood, 81 years old.